Shia. Yes, yes, we are back. Amen. We are in the house. We are back. Um, episode 48, Big Picture Podcast. We are on YouTube Live. We are on Facebook Live. Um, everybody tune in. I want to give a big shout out to everyone who's been following the brand while we took a little break. The uh, studio we was at uh, prior to this one um, had closed down. Um, shout out to Dave and FLO Empire. He retired from the game at 38 years old, I think. So he's uh, living his life of traveling, gambling, and he's actually doing uh, talent showcases now. So big shout out to the brother. Um, he taught me a lot and um, he's a good dude. So now we are here at Bravery Studios in the beautiful Clifton, New Jersey. Oh, I love it in here. Um, and... It's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good one. Um, so we have our brother, Mr. Terrell Brown, in front of us. Thank you, thank you. Um, chief Investment Officer, is that correct? Is that the correct title yes, that you go by? I'm, I'm the Chief Investment Officer. You might have to talk into the mic. That's yeah, the I'm first the Chief rule. Investment yeah, yeah. Officer as well as uh, the CEO of our sports market and business. Thank but we're a diversified financial services business. We have about four or five different businesses. Okay. Uh, firm name is called Loyalty Alliance Inc. Okay. Uh, so we have an insurance division, uh, wealth uh, management biz business, okay. uh, sports marketing, a direct lending, and a direct lending. So this business. is the, the company that you have, or are you talking about the hedge fund? No, no, no. So this this is not the. I, I've run an investment piece a, internally okay. now for uh, uh, me as well as our partners. Okay. Just like a fund, I used to work for a hedge fund. So okay. now I do that. I operate as a chief investment officer. Okay. But also, I now I'm the CEO of our sports marketing division. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I own fifty percent of my, the business. And my other partner own fifty percent of the of the business as well. Okay. And then we have different employees and then strategic partners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And now we have Miss Shannon to the right of me. She's Hello. here co-hosting with us today. I'm uh, very blessed to have her back in the building. Um, so it's 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 been a long long month. Of us been out, but like I said, I want to thank everybody who's been following up with us. Um, a lot's been going on. A lot's been going on in the world. Um, the first thing, you know, I, you know, we, we start off, for people who are just tuning in, you know, we have our trending topics, and then we get into whatever the, the major topic is for today. All right, so um, Dominican Republic. Um, for the past few weeks, they've been getting a lot of um, bad news. People have been dying. From uh, have you not? You haven't heard him? No, no. Wow, heard wow. I, yeah. I've actually heard about it, and okay. um, I'm yeah. catching what. Yeah, it's all. It's all. What were you gonna say, Shannon? What were you gonna say? So essentially, this is Phil mm -hmm. Terrell, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people are going to the Dominican Republic on vacations, and they're ending up dead, mm -hmm. poisoned, and it's actually been a few people that have died, been killed over there. Mm -hmm. They've never come back home. Like what, for financial reasons? No, or? Well, well, we don't know why. They mm -hmm. just, you know how they go to Punta Cana or yeah. they go to these different resorts? Well, they mm -hmm. do. One of the reasons why is because they are putting, um, someone said that there was bleach and in the alcohol. Their, in alcohol. Yeah, 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 I did hear All that. All right, yeah, so yeah, the yeah, mini yeah. bars are becoming a problem. Wow. You know, and he's on the resorts. Mm -hmm. All right, um, a couple said that um, his wife was riding on the four-wheeler ahead of him and somebody just rode up on him and started groping her. You know, matter of fact, he was ahead of her. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, somebody, you know, was groping her. Wow. Um, also, something came out about a school trip. They mm -hmm. went out there and they was doing their thing or whatever. And they said a couple of them end up in a hospital out there. Wow. wow. You know, getting their stomachs pumped, all that, all that crazy stuff. You know, then to top it off, you know, you got Big Poppy. You know, he just got, it was a hit out on him. Alle it was allegedly, allegedly. allegedly a hit out on him because they caught the people who, who had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. The shooter. And the shooter is saying that the hit wasn't for him. It was somebody else. <laughs> it was somebody else. So those were smart crooks. That, yeah, that's, that, that's that, some that, smart that, crooks. That's good PR right there. Crisis yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, yeah, man, I, I've never been to DR before. I'm so looking forward to go out there. Not anymore. 
Um, it even you didn't want to the, go out there. You were looking forward to no, it? No, no, no. I was until this. Oh, okay. I thought you said I'm so looking yeah, forward to it. No, I was. I to go to I DR was. just by hearing the different stories and stuff. But anywhere you go to a de- desperate environment, anywhere across the globe, you're going to get that where that desperation is at. Right. And they yeah. see Americans coming and different things like that. There's no opportunities probably there. And they see Americans coming and celebrating, doing these things. Yeah. And it's kind of like a slap in the face probably to the locals. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well, you know, you can't get a job, you can't support, you can't feed your family. So I understand probably both sides, and that's just probably some of the different tr- troubles that mm-hmm. we as a, a country and then as a world that we're facing mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. But, um, it's yeah, crazy. man, this stuff happens. I mean, like I said, these, these similar things are happening mm-hmm. uh, even right here uh, mm-hmm. in America. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, so, you know, I hope, I mean, I bro, I even wanted to, like, get a house out there, like a retirement house, because, you know, it's cheap. Mm-hmm. Buy a house out there, you know, you rent it out, Airbnb. Yeah. Now all of those drink those out the window. <laughs> out the window. Out out the window. It's a bad investment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a bad investment. That's you know. And then so, I would think too, doesn't tourism help their economy, but apparently not because now they really gonna be broke out there. But if they maybe, are maybe yeah, maybe are. the tourism situation is not even coming back to the communities and to the people, so yeah, so they're like they they yeah, don't they don't feel that it's like it's mm, like when people that say that might be a, yeah, a catch to somebody it. Somebody I was speaking to, uh, yeah. he's not elected official, but he's big mm. into politics. I think he said like the Bronx get like five billion or something every year, mm. and it's one of the richest uh, places even here in the city. But mm-hmm. yet the residents in the Bronx they don't benefit from mm-hmm. the budget at all. So even mm-hmm. though the money, the funds are there, mm-hmm. but the community, the residents, they don't benefit. So you mm-hmm. ask the average person in the Bronx and you ask them what they think about an elected official or something, they they really probably don't care. Mm-hmm. And so, so they're wondering, uh, okay, if someone's saying, okay, the person, that, that kid or that person is robbing or stealing mm-hmm. in the Bronx, you can kind of understand why if you've lived under those conditions. Mm-hmm. And, and so busy. you don't even have to go to the DR mm-hmm. to experience why they may feel left out mm-hmm. of the American dream because they are left out. And then once uh-huh. you become a man or woman and you have responsibilities and you can't support your family, you're going to do whatever you have to do mm-hmm. with the means to do so. And then the public uh-huh. education system, we don't need to even need to get there, but mm-hmm. it's already a pipeline for failure. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. I hope, I, you know, I wish, pray for the people out there, for the people that got hurt. You know, not yeah. hurt, but the people who got sick or and a couple people died. So, you know, prayers to their families. A couple, it's more than a couple. Yeah, yeah. So it's not good. So, um, did you see when uh, when they see us? That's the uh it's it's like a um it's not a movie. Okay. It's, it's, a movie. Like, it's it's a about movie. the Central Park Five. Yeah, it's like it's a mini series. It's a mini series. I've been two things: the yeah. Godfather thing and that Central Park Five. I've mm-hmm. I've been meaning I'm gonna actually watch both of them, but mm-hmm. I've somebody. It was real mm-hmm. emotional, so no, we real. decided to, you know, when when that emotional fiber is built up a bit more to watch mm-hmm. it. No, yeah. seriously, because it's crazy. You know, it's I, crazy. I, 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 didn't, I didn't mind. I didn't mind watching and stuff, but you have to make sure because it's so you emotional. Mean, yeah, and mm-hmm. now once you those emotions that you're feeling may spill over in other aspects in your life, mm-hmm. so you have to know when you able to control those emotions so it don't spill over that negative way. So it sounds mm-hmm. like you don't watch a lot of TV. I don't watch yeah, you I barely watch T V. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't watch TV. Yeah. I I, I read good. a lot, I think a lot, so that's my job. And part of the mm-hmm. investment piece, I'm reading mm-hmm. and I'm thinking. So if it's something within the financial business, some business that we're involved into or mm-hmm. that me as we're dealing with clients, that takes up a lot of my time. And then reading mm-hmm. uh, and thinking about new investment opportunities. Um that that takes up a lot of my time. Yeah. You know, the other stuff, movies and leisure and things like that, I just don't consume myself with general knowledge. Right. Mm. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yo, let's, uh, but I, no, it's all good. I understand that because TV, you know, is full of a lot of negativity yeah. anyway. So yeah. and then I don't, I barely watch TV, man. The only thing I watch is, I barely watch the playoffs, the finals. Mm-hmm. I didn't even watch the finals, be honest. Me neither. I, I, I didn't watch I swear, that And I, I, I thought I was. I convinced you know myself. No, I didn't watch it. Yeah, I, I really convinced myself to watch it, and <laughs> it, was, it wasn't it was happening, unfortunately. You know, so uh, much love to the Raptors. Yeah. But um, when they see us, um, I ran into Corey Wise today. Now, Corey Wise is one of the gentlemen who um, got the most time, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why he got the most time was because he was – uh, 16. Mm-hmm. So I guess they child him as like when I was an adult. And 16 is not an 16. adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that right so there. I ran into him uh, earlier to today. Like yeah, earlier today. And um, good, good brother, man. Good, mm-hmm. humble brother. Um, and God's willing, we'll have him on here, man. Interview mm-hmm. 
That'll be you good. Know, yeah. Hey, you should yeah. Be good. He, he's a part of the National Action Network, right? Yeah, With James, he is. Yeah, so yeah. even when yeah. I, was, I used to go to the James network, I used to see him every... Yeah, I would see him, you know, uh, just every weekend. He would be there, yeah. loyal, faithful, mm -hmm. uh, with Reverend Alan Sharpton. So yeah. I mean, after he got into that situation, he's in the community, he's giving back. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's that's what you really want to see. Right? Wow. And it's all due to the grace of the Lord. That's major right there. Yeah. That's major. So prop, props to Corey Wise, man. You know, we hope to have you on here. Because um, you know, you said he's giving back to the community. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he, he's hands on, so he really? he he he's at part of the National Action Network. Okay. He's always there every week. He's at the rallies. He's involved. Mm -hmm. He's engaged yeah. uh, with the issues. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. a key member within an organization. Yeah, because I used to go there every Saturday. Um, but that's how you know I, James. Yeah, yeah, just okay. that's how I know James, and also okay. I, I I would see him, so I I know mm -hmm. him a bit. You know, at so and social, we want mm -hmm. a close relationship, but Facts. he's definitely a good brother. Listen, if if you guys want to call in. If the ladies and the gentlemen want to call in, um, the number is, one second, no, I got it. The number is 862-261-9536, 862-261-9536. And also, um, go, to, go to YouTube. If you're not on YouTube already, go to YouTube Live because at some point, the whole, all, the, the whole episode will not be broadcasted through Facebook. All right, it's gonna it's gonna come at a point where it's gonna be cut off on Facebook, and you're only gonna be able to view it on YouTube Live. Okay, so it's 2020. YouTube <laughs> YouTube is where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. And you can also um, you can also pledge to the the business to the to the movement to the big picture movement. You you see the Cash App uh, uh, label and name on the screen. Okay, you can always do that. All right, so um. It's, 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 it's something how you said that. Um, I don't know if you did you watch any of it in the beginning or what, no? I what just know Carrie Wise, yeah. uh, him in general. So okay. I know the story just from being at the National yeah. Action Network and hearing it. I think yeah. then Tamika Mallory, when I was doing a, a workshop at uh, Fordham, I think about a week and a half ago, she yes. was, uh, I think, the guest speaker. She spoke about it. So I, I've been, I knew enough about yeah. the story. I but think, let me tell you something. That, but I didn't know all the details. The illest part about it, and not even the illest part about it. I tried to watch it once with my daughter, mm -hmm. and um, she was, they was all into it. Yo, it, it was just, hard. it's almost I couldn't watch it. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was hard to watch because the way the father w was making that boy lie, making his son lie, I just, it was just horrible. And then today, I, I said, I'm going to watch it. So I was watching it, and, and part of me was like, yo, this is, this is real. I can't watch this crap. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, then, was this, is it, um, I forget the uh, Hispanic guy's name, Latino guy, who, uh, who's yeah, one of the followers. He's, he's, a, he's, a very, he's a popular actor, too. Okay. Is this John? Is John Leguizimo? Is that him? Yes, that played the That's father. This he story. played a father. And he was even one of the guys who, the fathers, the parents, who uh, encouraged their sons to lie. You know, so, but, you know, I sucked it up a little bit, pause, and I, um, I, I, <laughs> I watched, I watched it, but I didn't watch the whole. Se I didn't watch all the series. Yeah, I I watched the first one and some of the second one. So I, I'm looking forward to watching. Um, well, I the watched rest the whole thing. You did, and yeah, and I also remember growing up mm -hmm. in New York City when that when yeah. that whole situation happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, you know, I stopped going to Central Park after that. Like mm -hmm. Central Park just had like this bad, this great cloud over it to me. Mm -hmm. um, I remember we all knew something was wrong, but, mm -hmm. you know, like they said, then they confessed to doing the crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their fate was sealed. That, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Um, at the end of the day, it's heartbreaking. Uh-huh. And it just attests to how we have a justice system, which should be called something else because there's no justice. Mm -hmm. um, how children are railroaded. Mm -hmm. Mentally disabled people are railroaded. A mentally disabled person is two times more as likely to be incarcerated. Incarcerated, because, right, uh -huh. um, because our mental our mental health mm -hmm. um, situation is really sucky in this country. Yeah, it's and locked. with Corey Wise being illiterate, he couldn't mm -hmm. read or write. There's mm -hmm. no way he, his, com, his I com wonder, I was wondering why he was like stuttering a lot in that yeah, movie. It's like you, I was like, what is, is this dude nervous or I gotta watch the no, whole thing? He, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, he 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 uh -huh. wasn't. You know, he was skipping a lot of school and stuff like that. So yeah. 
Interesting. Wow. The thing that was heartbreaking is that they showed the whole trial and they showed all of the holes in the stories. They showed the father come up and admit that he told his son to lie. They showed yeah. Curry Wise admitting that he couldn't read or write. He didn't write that statement. That's not him. Mm. And they still went to jail. They need to lock up that attorney, that defensive attorney. Yeah. That woman. They still went to jail. Well, she, she, she needs to be, be locked up, brother. Now because All right. I, it's, it's, she needs to go down because in the beginning, I thought she was trying to help them. Like, y'all have no evidence. Y'all have no evidence. It's the police that uh, yeah, no, but we No, but we're going to start there. She, it, she, let's start from the, the head. Because mm-hmm. once you start from the head, then she going to she, she gonna start snitching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying? So we hope. Yeah. You know, but she needs to go down because if, if OJ Simpson, if God forbid, or if, if some type of evidence came up, that he actually murdered his wife, they would lock him up. <laughs> yeah. They like if, if he confessed to it. If he confessed to it. <laughs> if I did, that's too <laughs> yeah, he, he would get he would get yeah. locked up. You know what I'm saying? So she need she needs to be she needs to be locked up and that's that. You know what I mean? So hopefully that happens, you know? So you said you didn't watch the finals. You haven't watched it? No, nah, I didn't watch it. I didn't finals, watch the finals. Man, not... Um it was that's a good look for Toronto. Mm. Uh Drake, he uh he he's he's Going hard for for his country, that's cool. You yeah. know what I mean? So much much props to Toronto. I mean, I know I wanted Toronto to win because mm-hmm. I was getting tired of seeing Golden State yeah. uh, win. You I'm, know what I'm saying? I, 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 I don't really have that sentiment just mm-hmm. being a competitor. I yeah. think. You used to play ball. Yeah, so, I used to play yeah, ball. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I really know how hard it <clears throat> is and how hard people fight in. Yeah. So I just think that whoever plays the best and yeah. even sometimes when you deserve it, whoever the best man or competitor they're gonna win right mm-hmm. and and that sport or that endeavor and i think mm-hmm. what the raptors showed it wasn't quad leonard he 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 took them there but the toronto team mm-hmm. they played better than the golden state team so what the mm-hmm. toronto raptors did they put a box and one on steph curry and mm-hmm. then they let draymond and iguodala and other role players uh, play and they good in transition, but they can't really do much in the half court because they're really okay. average players. But if you see, if you looked at Toronto average players, mm-hmm. they really stepped their game up and outperformed uh, mm-hmm. Golden State uh, other team players. And yeah. Kawhi Leonard and Steph Curry, they, the numbers were probably similar. You know, mm-hmm. they 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 got their averages. Mm-hmm. So when you look at that, it it was more in regards to the role players and stepping mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. Uh, and doing that. And that's that's part of the team, and I do think that's that they up. got out coached. Golden mm. State. So. That's what's up. That's what's and up. Just, and then Kawhi Leonard just had a determination. That, yeah. Like, you know, I think he... he, he knew, shout he, he out to Greg Popovich for that. He knew what it was. He knew what it was. He knew what it was. Yeah, so... You know. So, back to OJ. Yep. Uh, OJ, he's getting a little... <laughs> nah, OJ is getting a little slack for uh, starting social media. Mm-hmm. Social media pages. People are coming at him. Um, and he also put out a video um, saying he's, he's a, he has unfinished business. Now, all, all of this is happening around the 25th anniversary of Nicole Simpson being uh, okay. murdered. So Yeah, OJ just get me, man. He, he just, yeah, is, you need to chill out. Yeah, he, he's involved in too many negative things. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't know if he, he does it for attention or whatever the reason is, but mm-hmm. when you have something of value and something of stuff, mm-hmm. substance and use someone... Uh, of the stature of OJ, you just don't need to do those things. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. it's just not called for. Right. You've done enough in your life where still people respect you and for what you've done, the body of work, and just mm-hmm. stand off of that. Yeah. yeah. And go sit down somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Grandpa. Like, go watch huh. some football. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> go watch some go watch some football. Shout out to Tiffany Haddish. Um, she just canceled her show in Georgia because in Georgia they just uh, have a new law called the heart a bill called the heartbeat bill all right and it's banning abortions in georgia so she canceled her show uh show she had in georgia because of that how mm-hmm. you how you feel about that no, I know that's a touchy Shannon subject. Talk, yeah, listen, I know that's a touchy subject, I just, I just, and I'm not going to speak I, I, too I much about speak it. I speak on things where I'm that, an expert yeah, at, so exactly. I always stay in my lane. So, and there, there's yeah. many different schools of thoughts, but Facts. I would definitely yeah, love to yeah, hear her Yeah, we can't even speak opinion. on that. Yeah, that's only Shannon yeah, right there. We, I don't, we ain't I, trying I don't to get shot down. Right, yeah, I don't carry, baby. Yeah, yeah, we don't have no right to. You don't know how We don't have a right to an opinion. We don't. know how hard it is being pregnant. So how do you feel about that, sister? Was was How you feel about you know, I can't never speak on what another woman chooses to do Facts. with her body and her life. Because one of the most heartbreaking things is for a child to be born into this world mm-hmm. and nobody wants them. Mm-hmm. True. Right? True. So just being born 
is not is is a gift, but then it's not a gift when nobody wants you, mm -hmm. right? And you're discarded. Mm. Copy. So my school of thought is two things: woman's body, woman's choice. Mm -hmm. I do feel woman. The woman has a choice, even though I am pro life. Mm -hmm. But I don't judge people who. Um, do what they deem is necessary. There's too many um, children dying right now. There's too mm -hmm. many children, babies being raped mm -hmm. uh, because the parents don't care about them or, you know, whatever the situations are. Mm -hmm. um, they're dying anyway, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. you know, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so you're saying they should have a right to have an abortion if they want to? I mean, if, if I was, if, I mean, if, if a young person was raped mm -hmm. by a family member... Mm -hmm. They should have... Yeah, so it should be like a clause should they have to carry? Like a, should they have to carry a child into this world that, one, they didn't ask for, mm -hmm. was forced upon them, True. and could possibly come out with genetic, mm -hmm. you know... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Issues because of the situation. I do think there, there's the gray areas, right? There's no absolutes in this world. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so nobody's absolutely right. No situation oh, is absolutely wrong. Yeah, you know, I do think there are some situations where it may be necessary. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful I've never been in that position. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I can't judge another woman or mm -hmm. girl because mm -hmm. these some some of these people getting abortions are children, are young yeah. young people. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> right. We not we not really we not really considering the age of the mother either in this situation. Yeah. The only thing they said the only thing they said was a heartbeat, but mm -hmm. the baby in these situations have the least say and the least control over the environment, mm -hmm. over the circumstances that they're being born into. So if that man or that woman decides, because some of these women are having abortions because the, the boyfriends or the husbands wants them to, mm -hmm. you know, it's not always the woman's decision. Sometimes there's men that'll tell you, mm -hmm. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. So what wow. you gonna do? Yeah, well, so it's something that we like. I agree with you. <laughs> you know, we, it's up to the woman. It's up it's, to the. It's, it's yeah. your it's choice. You know, never make anybody f make you feel bad for doing what you feel is best mm -hmm. for you. Because, again, it's 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 bad, but it's wrong to bring a child into the world that is unwanted phone and call? unloved. Oh, okay, sorry. All right, so call it that. <laughs> Hello. Hello, this is Big Picture Podcast. Thank you for calling in. Who's this? Hey, this is uh, uh, Randy. How you doing? Oh, man, Brother Randy. How you doing, sir? I'm doing excellent. It's a beautiful day. How's everything going? Everything is blessed, man. We we out here. You know, we got Mr. Terrell Brown and Miss Shannon in the building. You know, um, we're going to be talking finance in a few minutes, um, how to get out of financial debt, how to don't even get in debt, hmm. you know, how to live comfortably. Financially comfortable. Um, we were actually, you know, actually segueing into that. You know, um, any questions, any anything you want to ask our brother Terrell while you're on the line? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely want to hear his perspective on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the whole debt situation, the whole, you know, how do we uh, prepare for retirement? Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the, you know, the, I think you know wh whether it comes to abortion or economics, yeah. I, I think that the uh, there's a huge problem, especially in the African American community, mm -hmm. where we're just not informed of the origins of something, the origins of things. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, the sister that was uh, on, she said that she was pro life, um, but you mm -hmm. know, she also respects the uh, idea of, uh, you know, uh, you know, a woman has the right to choose uh, what happens to her body. Uh, you know, now, you know, I look at it from more of a, a, a biblical perspective, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's look at this thing from a historical perspective yes. uh, in understanding uh, Planned Parenthood, uh, a woman named Margaret Sanger. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the original intent of this organization called Parent Planned Parenthood? It was mm -hmm. uh, there solely for the extermination of uh, black people and since. This organization has been uh, uh, founded, uh, you know, they're, they're talking about some of five million uh, uh, black uh, uh, babies have been aborted. A, a year? And this is all. How, how, how long? Uh, uh, 
Uh, you know, I think cents is a section, but millions. It's, it's in the millions okay. uh, uh, of uh, uh, black children. And now this is all public information. Mm-hmm. Um, it can all be looked up. So, you know, I, you know, I definitely understand uh, the perspective that people comes from when it comes to a woman's body or a woman's choice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, however, we don't we don't look at the origins of these organizations, what mm-hmm. their intent is, the founders, uh, uh, you know, uh, population control. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're just not looking at the larger uh, uh, picture of why these organizations were put in place mm-hmm. and what their intent is. Mm-hmm. Now, there always could be a legitimate reason for why a woman could, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, choose an abortion. You know, I, I can definitely understand that. But again, you know, w- 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 you know, our people, we lack the, the, the historical uh, uh, background and foundation of why, you know, things like this are taking place. Why is there, uh, you know, such a high rate of uh, abortions? Why is it that there's a hard, such a high rate of incarcerations? Why is it? We're not looking at the, the root cause uh, in, in the origins of these things. And I think until we... Uh, you know, uh, you know, our people become better informed um, of these things, you know, then, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll have a heightened perspective on, uh, you know, how we should be proceeding and how we should be, you know, viewing things uh, like abortion and these things, just segueing into, um, you know, the, the economics, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, as well as, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, 401ks, annuities. And, and, and again, you know, uh, yeah, you know, it's sad, you know, to uh, see the state of our people because a lot of people don't know what economics, they don't know what fiat currency is. They don't know what central banking is. They don't know what fractional reserve banking is. They don't know, um, you know, uh, how the stock market works. They just don't know these things. And so, you know, um, uh, and, and I'd like to see, you know, you know, what, 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 the, what this expert, what this panel, uh, you know, what is his perspective on, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what, what does it mean to, you know, gain wealth? Because, you know, I, I, you know, I come from a perspective, you know me, Lamont, man, mm-hmm. you know, I grow my own food, uh, you know, I have no debt, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I own my land straight out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I believe in, you know, real m- money, gold and silver. Mm-hmm. And again, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're not telling our people about what it really means to be debt free and financially independent. Um, you know, mm-hmm. stock market crashes, you know, I mean, I can go on and on about this stuff because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm self. So is that a question that you um, have for uh, yeah. Brother Terrell? Yeah. So, you know, so Brother Terrell, you know, I mean, what is your perspective on the uh, with the way that the quote unquote the system has trained us to look at uh, investments, to look at debt, because uh, it seems like debt is the new wealth today, Ooh, um, yeah. as opposed to you know what we need to be doing uh, in terms of uh, developing real assets um, in uh, uh, looking at the reality of the socioeconomic situation and you know the stock market and. And, and, and debt and twenty two trillion dollars. You know, what is your perspective on all of these things? So, I mean, you, you touched on many, many different things, right. um, and, yeah. and and I'll address one in regards, as you already know, when you talk about the Federal Reserve and the central banks and fiat currencies. Uh, we live in a credit and debt society. Uh, which most people don't, you know, they don't understand. They don't understand that, you know, we as the United States is, you know, very indebted to China as well as uh, some of our other foreign um, for, for, for foreign counterparts. And uh, mm-hmm. so that's what the U.S., our situation is a unique situation. You need to understand that and understand that how with the currency crisis and how oil is backed with the currency and different things like that. But that's a uh, topic really I don't think for this uh, right here that's a very in-depth conversation that we can have mm-hmm. and in regards to the socioeconomics in regards to uh, our people I mean with the us having the spending power of a trillion plus dollars we would be the ninth largest country uh, and that's you know that's country in the world so we actually have the capital and we have the okay and we when we have the spending power um, to be able to change our situation 
And with the digital age and the information, we have really enough people, even in the business world, that understand about money. But I think it's the organization and the unification that we lack that we really don't have. And it's back to even people saying, okay, if you look at, okay, let's look at gentrification. Let's look at even before, uh, during uh, segregation. When segregation, African Americans were forced to stick together. So those black businesses, the doctors, the lawyers, we were all in the community. Now that we're more spread out and as globalization, it's a bit more difficult mm-hmm. to do that. But if you have uh, different business leaders uh, to do so, people can do that. And like, even if people in the community, they all pulled their resources together and started a company, they could become extremely successful. But I really do, do think it's due to that uh, the the right information information and a lack of organization and i'll touch on probably one of the best things i love the stock market i think it's the one of the greatest wealth uh creators in history of mankind because where could you go and to become a part owner in these different businesses um and you can't you know if someone had a private business you mm-hmm. can go invest in there but if i'm a public business just like the new york stock exchange they have thirteen thousand. Uh, companies alone so if you're not a value mm-hmm. company you're not a look at it you can become a part owner and the success and the products and services that you already buying so i think it's a it's really a wealth creator if you understand mm-hmm. it and know how to use it appropriately so these are just tools and vehicles that you really need to uh understand and be trained and understand in currency uh, money what's real money when he's talking about gold and silver and hard assets and things like that and fiat mm-hmm. currency and really understanding how to use both does that answer your question, brother? That's, that's oh, yeah. I mean, you part. definitely hit on the organization part, which is, you know, I mean, you know, it, it, you know we have that this, this spending power, but in, unless we have the organization, um, and this is why we believe, and, you know, I believe personally working with individuals that are serious about, you know, mm-hmm. pulling resources together. This is what I've, you know, personally committed my life to do, and there's fruit there. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, there's not too many black men are debt free and financially independent yep. uh, and that don't depend on and, the system. And let me so, touch on like, that real know, fast while, yeah. you, while you're there, because I believe in the same thing. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Little to no debt, a lot of cash, a lot of assets. And what Warren Buffett or Jamie Dimon will consider a fortress balance sheet. Um, and if you, you really shouldn't be using debt, uh, there's ways to how you can use it in this society to benefit you. But over the long mm-hmm. haul, you know, leverage is normally how most people go broke, and that's overspending, mm-hmm. you know, on things when you don't really have the means to go ahead and do so. Mm-hmm. And this doesn't, it, it, it's really color agnostic. And people think it's just African Americans. No, it's, no, not. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's not. It's not. It's just a society thing in regards to you know how the Western society operate and using debt. Okay. Oh, you know, you, know, you, know, you, you hit on some key points. Yeah. Okay. Um, you you mentioned abortions and you know this also goes into yep. it too. You know, children are an expense. The reality is right. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, children are an children expense. Are they are an expense. Uh-oh. Yes, they are expense. Yes, you right. shouldn't be you shouldn't be laying down and, and having sex, and uh, you know if if you can't deal with the repercussions. So yeah, definitely I agree. They are an expense. Okay, I'm trying and- to have a boatload of them. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my brother. <laughs> I want more kids too, man. That's yeah. all the topic I know. Yeah. Multiply yeah. and be fruitful. Yeah, yeah. Man. we live in Bible ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree totally. Yeah. People, why do That's people man, look at ahead. us crazy, Randy? Why do people look at us crazy because when we say we want more kids? Because it contributes to the poverty yeah. line when you when you have a lot of kids that you don't have the means to take but to if, take care of. Okay, keyword: if you don't have the means to take care of them. Yeah. That's if so you true. don't have the means, That's you know, true. if you That's have true. the means, yeah. and then you know you, you you should have them. You know what I mean? But like you said, that motivates me to make more money. If I want more kids, I got to make more money, and I want more kids. I have, I have two little girls. I want to shoot for a boy at some oh, point. Oh, Lord, Lamar. What? At some point, I want to shoot for a boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At some point. No, I mean, at some point. You know me, you know? Lamar. I'm, I'm a polygynist, so, you know, I mean, you know, I'm trying to get as many in with as many. That's the problem. Like, what's up? What's up? Men, y'all have the fun part. You know, y'all have the fun part. Y'all don't have. What's the fun part? Making them. Y'all don't have to carry them. Y'all don't have to give birth to them. Y'all don't have to. Do with all of the health issues and stuff okay. that comes with it. So, you got that. You got that. You know, you have to consider right. your role in the situation and 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 the weight of your role. It, 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 
Uh, it depends on the perspective. I, mm-hmm. Again, you know, I mean, you know, the idea is that, you know, uh, you know, you know, my wives, you know, they don't have to work. You know, all they have wives. to do is just tend to me while I tend yeah. to, yeah. to oh you know, uh, uh, the business at hand. You know, they yeah. don't have to work. They don't have to get out there and do a nine to five. But that's you know, a wonderful thing is, because kids need know, their mother at yeah. home. Absolutely. I mean, and, and like I said, you know, I, I come from a biblical perspective of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, a wife is a chase keeper at home. Uh, not All right. A corporate nine to five job. All so, right. uh, you know, I respect uh, it. Yeah. So, you know, but like you were saying, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I definitely agree from the perspective of, of you know, ch- you know, children are in expense. And so I think mm-hmm. it goes back to, you know, having personal responsibility Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, ensuring that, you know, these types of situations, uh, you know, do not take place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we need to look at, you know, education and prevention uh, because, you know, once you go down this road of, you know, you know, you know, I've, you know, I'm pretty sure Lamont have run into sisters, you know, we've run into sisters, you know, mm-hmm. back in our day where, you know, abortion was the birth control method. It wasn't, uh, mm-hmm. you know, she wasn't raped or anything. She, mm-hmm. you know, she just didn't want to <laughs> deal with the responsibility. Why don't so, men use birth control? You know, I think well, they create why, a pill. Why, they why, have a pill. Well, why, they have always, a, <laughs> why is that always... They got this pill. Do you understand? <laughs> this is the thing. This is my, this is my point. Yeah. You want us to they control, they, they, you, you, but you want the control to be on us. Yeah. And preventing it. Well, the control it. needs to be on everybody. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. So I don't, you know, yeah. I mean, not, not a lot of men like to say, that, oh, well, she should have been on birth control. Well, you should have been on birth control, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do. I think they have a I pill. Out. <laughs> but I wouldn't trust the pill. I swear I wouldn't trust the pill. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's, like it's I said, you want like the woman to be responsible, <laughs> you know, when it's convenient for y'all. Terrell, you have any kids? You know what I'm saying? No kids okay. at all. About, all right. about 10, 11 nieces and nephews. But, right. uh, man, it's it's. I think it's just a Happy Father's tip. Day too, Randy. Yes, I'm sorry. Definitely, happy definitely Father's happy, Father's happy Father's Day, Day man. That's one thing. Word, thanks. Uh, I love my mom. I wouldn't definitely be able mm. to do anything without her, but I just think, you know, Mother's Day is for like you know, every day, but yeah. even fathers don't really get the support that they need. And they, yeah. they really, I so see a good. lot of good brothers. You know, even my brothers, my cousins, mm. are they all in their, you know, their 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 woman's lives. Most of them are married. Yeah. And they just don't feel like the support is there, mm. you know. Um, mm. and, and so I definitely want to say thanks and happy Father's Day. I, I don't have uh, kids myself, mm. but um, I feel like, you know, being mm. an uncle or just mm. a, a brother mm. to a lot of people and mm. so much support in regards to business, it's mm. like mm. I'm a dad to, yeah. you know, a lot yeah. of people. So <laughs> even from, a you know, elected officials, they come to me, they want to raise money, they want to do this, Whatever. they need resources. And as always in regards, especially when you consider the money guy, Facts. you know, everybody come to you they Facts. with uh, about a problem. So every day there is, you know, a money issue. Mm. And so from that standpoint, I feel like the responsibility, maybe that's why I feel, you know, think about kids right. and, and, and a different way yeah, yeah. Um, and, and growing up and realizing the responsibility, how hard it is to raise a child. People yeah. don't really oh, realize yeah. no, that. No, yeah, it's, yeah, It's really a human being and you, you, there's many different things and mm-hmm. skills that you have to have to raise mm-hmm. and some people are not ready it's, it's not for everybody um but it's it, it really take a unique take unique people to to do that job it's a lifelong but, it's a lifelong project and but, take that but you know the desire caveat one to that is everybody yeah. can have sex and everybody can make a baby so yeah, everybody, but, everybody but like can't said, make a baby everybody can't make a well, baby what yeah. I'm trying to say is people that shouldn't <laughs> be, we gotta, they, All right. we gotta speak yeah. for them too, man. You people that saying? shouldn't yeah. be making them can make them. Yeah. Right? The universe doesn't put no cap on it. Cool, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. But it's like business, it's like it's like anybody can start a business, but you know, right. should they be, but it's, I think that's the thing in regards to choice mm. and one thing we I think we complain about America a lot, which mm. th- do complain, but I still think it's the greatest country in the world mm. where you have opportunities where we just don't have in other places of the world based True. on, you know, you can come and be whoever you want to be in America, given right. any opportunity. And so I think if we mm. look at that and look at that freedom and that choice that we have, yes, it's, it's difficult obstacles, mm. but you can definitely accomplish things and do what you want to mm-hmm. an extent. Okay. Lamont, yeah, Randy? This is what, What's up? Lamont, this is why I don't come to New York because I can't carry my gun with me. <laughs> 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 we got, yo, I told oh, you, we got to come, I got to come out there and visit you, man. <laughs> Hey, 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 Randy, we don't resort to so, violence. You know, we, we, 
we live in a country <laughs> where you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have this constitution, like we have this 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 stock market that doesn't benefit. It benefits uh-huh. the one percent. It doesn't benefit the ninety nine point nine nine percent because a lot of people just don't have enough money to um, uh, invest in the stock market. You know, the average mm-hmm. person couldn't come up with two hundred dollars to, you know, save their life, let alone invest in the stock market. But you know, mm-hmm. this is what you know getting more into inequality. Mm-hmm. Where you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, they say that you have a Second Amendment, except mm-hmm. if you go to New York or New Jersey, or except, you know, right, yeah. you know, I, you know, I, you know, I mean, they say that you know this is the you know greatest country in the world, but with but, the highest prison but, population. But there's a big but. Yeah, yeah. Big I but. mean, that's what anything. But yeah, there, yeah, there's I mean, definitely yeah, they, challenges. They, 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 you know, but I don't think you would want to go ahead and live in Bangladesh. Yeah, you can't own your land. Exactly, you can't own your you can't own your gun. You can't own your land, and I think that's just a that's just what it is. There's still mm-hmm. more. There's more I, pros than cons uh, to the system, and even though we I still agree. we got to recognize those inequalities, and it's good people like us that have to make a difference and and and, and do better, make sure those things uh you know are, are shortened, meaning those inequalities. And just help out, and sure. then a lot of times too, man. Especially with the internet, with information, mm-hmm. and digital age, there's opportunities that was that was never available. You can get to almost any billionaire uh, or company right on your social media. Send them a direct message, reply mm-hmm. to them. You have a product or service, you can get to them. So like Robert Smith, he has only twenty thousand followers. He's the richest African American mm-hmm. in the United States. So if you're a tech guy, mm-hmm. you somebody, you can get right there to him. There's opportunities before you could never get to a billionaire. Or right. I mean, it would be really hard. Take years, many mm-hmm. contacts, and different things. So that's just with this digital age as well with technology and with the internet it's like why people are ignorant and libraries are free wow mm. and you got the internet mm. so i mean if you really got that desire you can educate yourself mm. almost on uh, towards anything and most of the billionaires they're self-educated right. and this, this is just throughout history mm-hmm. and so you can't say it's the school yes it's not formal education but it's edu- a form of education but their so, families have a lot to do with that too I yes see. and no I mean yeah. if, you, if you even take even back in the day like who taught uh, you know John D. Rockefeller oil or Andrew Carne- Carnegie Steel mm-hmm. them Mm-hmm. I mean, but that's just part of being in the business. Like, said, if someone say, okay, let's say Jay Z, he's a billionaire now. Mm-hmm. Who taught Jay Z music? Him. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he learned the business one step at a time. Time, yeah. and that's just what the same thing. Oprah, she didn't finish college. Even who taught Oprah that business? Mm-hmm. Her. She learned it was that desire. Mm-hmm. And people don't even look at even the African Americans here in the United States and that success and the success stories. Mm-hmm. That um, if you just look at those and just study even mm-hmm. the top people. Um, most of it is really self-talk because once you get out of school and you do that, it's going to be that burning the desire and have to be an expert in that field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so before we let you go, Randy, um, Terrell, how, yes, can, how can Randy get in contact with you if he has any questions or wants to, you know, need your services? Yeah, Randy, you can call my cell direct. I, I actually do answer. Uh, I'm not superficial at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I do try to keep it real. So you can either, all my social media is Terrell, T E R R E L L J Brown. So that's LinkedIn, that's Twitter, as well as Instagram. Or you can call me at 646 829 8723. And, you know, we can buy some land together. I, I, I don't do nothing with guns or anything like that. But, uh, I might need to talk to you about some land, well, too. Leave, leave that yeah, up to me. To <laughs> with the land we can do. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Oh I'll leave, leave the guns and the babies to you. <laughs> right. And, 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 oh, believe you me, I'm a, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I've never okay. been arrested for anything. Good, good. Oh, no, man. and I, 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 I love that, <laughs> That's man. That's my dude right there. Yeah, yep. Yo, Randy, man, much love, man. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, yes, we'll sir. be here every Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Um, so just continue to tune in and, and we love it, brother. All right. I'm a, I'm a listen and, li- and, and eat my dinner. All hey, right. awesome. One last thing, Randy, we definitely appreciate you calling in, man, and the support. This, these are the conversations and the things that we need to do more we often. Need to talk about. And, and it's people like us that need to connect, stay connected, organize, unify, and mm-hmm. be able to make the changes that, uh, we see that need to be made. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Cool. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, brother. Right. I'll talk to you have later. A, have a blessed day. Bless. All right. Yeah, man. Good brother right there. Um, Once again, people, if you want to call in, uh, we're not going to take, well, I'll probably take another call, um, but 862-261-9536. I just, I want to give a big shout out to my guys uptown in Harlem, MK, Mr. MK. Hold up. I'm I'm saying my brother's name wrong, B. (laughs) Mr. 212. All right. MK, Mr. 212. All right. He has a new song out with my guy, Cole Ice. Uh, Paper Over, Gutter Mills, and PT, and it's produced by T-Top Dollar. 
All right, the song was called Big Bag. I just sent it to my engineer, so, you know, we'll probably do, like, a little intermission, mm. you know, uh, a little two-minute, three-minute intermission. Okay. Get, show them some love. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so so we here. We here, people. Um, we're on YouTube Live. I said earlier, we on, we're here on Facebook, but at some point, Facebook will be cut short, and the only way you'll be able to watch it is through YouTube. So I advise you to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get all of this good content and good people that pull up, all right? Um, we're also on Apple and on Spotify, so you can listen while you're on the road or, you know, chilling with your shorty or something like that, all right? So um, I want to give a big shout-out, though, to all the graduates, yes. all the people who graduated from college, high Congrats. school, yep. you know, um, uh, elementary school, mm -hmm. two of my daughters, they graduated, my only two daughters. I said two of my daughters, I got a lot of kids, right? <laughs> so um, uh, they graduated, one went to the sixth grade, and the other is going to the ninth grade. Okay. So uh, the youngest one, she had her prom last night, fifth grade prom. Yeah. How was that? It was interesting. Um, it was interesting. Dad. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't actually sit in the gym. But you wanted to. I wanted to. Yeah. But I couldn't. You know, and I asked my daughter. I said, you yeah. know, she was like, no, dad. No. I was like, all right, cool. I was like, but there was no parents up there anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, they had a good time. Um, one of the girls said another boy was looking at her butt. I don't know what that's about, but kids are too fast. Not looking at my Come daughter's on. butt. Yeah. Do but you remember <laughs> you as a kid? Yo, when I was in fifth grade, Come I wasn't on. looking. Fifth grade. Come Come on. On. I wasn't looking at booty in fifth grade, bro. Lamar. Hey, you better than me, brother. Lamar. <laughs> Remember, I was in the boys' yeah. choir hall, yeah. so yeah. Oh, we yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. yo, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But that's we're talking about yeah. the fifth grade. Nah, fifth grade, man. It, it, I ain't still looking at boys in the eighth, York, ninth grade. I, I'm from Camden, so eighth, Camden, seven. New Jersey. Fifth grade, we was yeah, you know, we was up all night. Yeah, yeah, know, running yeah, the streets. So. But yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. it's of course, it's, it's different times and different yeah. things like that. Right? At least they be, you know, looking at girls and some of the other things they get involved That's in. Not that there's anything wrong yeah, with the, the other yeah. side, <laughs> but we're just saying. <laughs> at least they're looking at something. Yeah. Some, something positive. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop. We gotta clean it up. Yeah. We gotta. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta keep. All right. So we, uh, we said we gonna keep yeah. it real. Though. Yeah. We, we, keep we, it we gotta up. keep it real. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, yeah. this is the big picture. Yeah. We show love to both sides. We show love to both sides. You know what I'm saying? So. No, I do um, want to. Yeah, I want yeah, to touch yeah, on your point, yeah. man. Definitely, con congratulations. <laughs> I think anybody who's graduating because it's yeah, an accomplishment man. of people finishing something, starting right. whatever, mm -hmm. starting something but finishing. And people don't realize how hard it is, even mm -hmm. if it's the smallest thing to finish mm -hmm. it. How, how do y'all? I'm sorry. How but, do you? How do you feel about this step up thing? They having like these step up. Uh, uh, Ceremonies? Yeah. What's wrong with that? No, no. I'm. I, what, I, what's I, step, step yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So like, we didn't have that. We didn't have kindergarten. That. Yeah. Of, to um, first grade and pre-K to kindergarten. They do it for the little babies. Okay. Oh, so it's only those grades. I thought it was like no, it's all only the for elementary the grades. No, oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm about to say. I thought about this thing. Because it's, it's their first year of schooling. Yeah. And they're rewarding them okay. for making it through their first year. Some kids don't go to pre-K, so okay. kindergarten will be their first year. So it's only one step up thing. It's only one step up ceremony for okay. kindergartners or pre-K. I could have sworn my, my, my uh, cousin, she has, you know, she has a son, and I could have sworn she said, like, he's going to, like, the fifth grade, the fourth to the fifth. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. But then, yeah. It was a step. It wasn't, it wasn't like, yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, he's not going to the, that. yeah. He's not going to the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And he's not, you know, in I kindergarten celebrate, or whatever, but, but you know? I have a different view on that. I celebrate every little win. So anything I, to, yeah. the next, to the next step, it could be, okay, listen, yeah. I just got a proposal. Yeah. I, just, I got the letter and that's of intent. Bro. That's important, I got this yeah. because people don't realize how hard it is, especially if you're in business, you're an entrepreneur, whether even if you're in color, a yeah. person of color, man yeah. or woman in America, but especially, you know, our environment or the mm -hmm. people of color, most of the things they have to say are negative. So you yeah. yourself have to be reward mentally yourself. focused yes. and reward yourself constantly, individually, each and every day. Right. Um, so and so you don't have some of these mental health issues that mm. people, you know, that our community, and they're not just, or just the world, this culture, American mm. culture, have in general. So me, I celebrate every little thing mm. as a step up. Yeah. So that's just... It's, it's crazy I think people you say should that. do that, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's rewarding. You you feel mm -hmm. better. You do things. So even if I might go out to a dinner, might do that mm -hmm. mentally. I may not tell nobody, but mentally, mm -hmm. you're treating yourself. Yeah, you're treating you yourself. So to, it's just yeah. like, oh man, why why you like all high energy and everything? I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I'm always high on life. I don't smoke, I don't drink, but mm -hmm. that's just how I feel. Right. Major key, uh, yeah. major key, so, sober guy, yep. sober investor. That. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> 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 all right, we 
got a call. We got a call. Okay. Uh, call it. Go ahead. Big Picture Podcast. What's going on? This is Ray D. Rockefeller on the check-ins. Hey, hey, what's up, my brother? How you doing, man? What's going on? What's going on? What's hey, going on? Hey, man. Love, 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 is love is love. Uh, um, we, uh, you know, we yeah. have a sober investor here. Nobody wants a drunk investor. No. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, <laughs> and, and, but one of, the, one, of the, nah, nah, one of the major points that we just talked on just now is rewarding yourself and how important it is to reward yourself. Because a lot of times, mm. you know, we look for other people to reward us. You know, we look, we we wait for that validation. Yeah. Like, mm. I just gotta win. Is does it really mean anything? Mm -hmm. You know, every, nobody's celebrating. Like, celebrate yourself. And I want to give a big oh, shout yeah, out too. to my boy, um, Aaron from Uptown. He has a book out called um, "You Already Won," and I'm almost 40 years old. And in his book, he states that you know, like, it's important to reward yourself. Mm -hmm. And any any win, anything that you yeah. feel is important. You know, reward yourself. Yeah. You understand? And so, you're gonna fall short of these goals. You definitely gotta stuff. bust yourself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. When you, anytime you, whether you're paycheck to paycheck or you got that life, you gotta, like mm -hmm. they say, pay yourself first. Yeah. Because bills are gonna be bills. Yeah. Mortgage is mortgage, rent is rent. You gotta yeah. pay yourself first. Yeah. Because the bill collectors and all of them, they can care less how you live. Facts, facts. So, my brother Ray, we have we have uh, our brother Terrell here, Chief Officer, Investment Officer here. Um, do you have any questions for him? Anything you you want to ask him? That's um, not going to cost you. Because <laughs> we ain't no right. sauce for free. No sauce for free. Yeah. But yeah, anything anything broad, anything, you know. I mean, we, we can get into the weeds a little bit. Yeah. I, I like yeah. all the, uh, yeah. throw, throw me some fast yeah. whatever you feel most comfortable okay. with. So right. I can still do it with them. They ain't going to get all the sauce. Them. Because it's like, I can get you the sauce, but yeah. it's a, you know, once you put those little extra spices in there, yeah. it's a different sauce. Different ball game. <laughs> different ball game. <laughs> but go ahead, Ray. What's up, dog? What's up? Like uh, I heard you comment earlier about the uh, the step up process, and I think the Ooh, the yeah. whole step up thing with these kids is is, is robbing them of celebrating. To me, it's just wrong. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. It's, 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 to me, the, the step up. I hate to go back, but it's like it's okay. the step up process is robbing them of celebrating, like how we celebrated a graduation, a full blown graduation. Like, yeah. you see what are I mean? they gonna? So what you're saying is, are they gonna know the difference? Right. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's right okay. new rules. Okay. This is okay. a different okay. world. This is a different time. I mean, even yeah. those little ones, I think it's uh, any any false sense of something with it not success and accomplishment is different, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So anything that you accomplish, you should celebrate, right? Because right? right. you've passed. But even if, like, let's say, for example, someone, you might have got a C on there, but you did your best. That was the best you can do. I know, like, mm -hmm. chemistry, science. I would fail. Literally. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see me something in business. Even right now, somebody yeah. asked me something about technology. I'm yeah. probably get a D or F, but if I did my best, I'm going to mm -hmm. celebrate that. Mm -hmm. And I just that's think true. that yeah. that's even that's if it's based on that barometer, if mm -hmm. it's just a celebration to give someone to celebrate mediocrity, mm -hmm. laziness and things like that. No, it, it's definitely bad. But I think also, too, we live in just a different time. Mm -hmm and different things so there's new rules being written and we have to adjust and we have to adapt and who it's not our you know opinion to say what's right and what's wrong within a different culture it's being recreated yeah right. yeah wow right. that's deep that's deep any any other questions you got for him bro uh how would how would a person go about what do you think a person to do to start their business should they use a personal loan or a business loan and why well, mm -hmm. it really just depends where you are. We was having this conversation before. I think the first thing you need to do is come up with a competitive advantage. And before you get into business or you think about it, and what is your competitive advantage? What product or service that you're offering to the marketplace within, you know, that this world that we got with seven plus billion people that where a consumer is going to buy your product as opposed to someone else. And as we said, and, and if you once you come up with that, it just depends on your personal situation. Uh, you may not need a loan. You might even be able to go ahead and get uh, consumers to purchase your product, and they can purchase it directly. So they almost... Um, essentially like vendor financing you uh in a way so it really just really depends on the business but if they are going to go take out a loan i would say um if you don't want to give up equity and you want to take on debt just so you can retain more equity and you really believe in your business uh, it may be beneficial to take out a loan and have that competitive advantage first and build a team and then start thinking about how you're going to fund your business hmm. you got that right Okay, got it. Got you loud and clear. Thank you, my brother. All right, cool, brother. All right, cool. That was great, man. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah, man. Love is love, man. Mm -hmm. So, um, like we said, congrats right. to everybody. Um, 
So, Ray, you still there? Okay, cool. Um, so, what college did you go to? I went to Drew University. It's in Madison, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, okay. Drew. And you made you majored in economics. Economics. I majored in, uh, majored in uh, economics. I graduated May 2012. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And Drew, they had a Wall Street program. Okay. They're a selective program. You actually have to get selected, so it's the best and brightest. Uh, mm-hmm. students and now since I've graduated they actually have a master's program mm-hmm. about finance and it's a small liberal arts school uh, mm-hmm. really where wealthy kids go to that really can't mm-hmm. compete or fit, take the pressure of Ivy Leagues mm-hmm. and so they go to these small schools like Drew Williams mm-hmm. um, Earth Sinuses and some of the other smaller liberal arts I went to Drew it was a good school for me uh, they had an internship on Wall Street I learned okay. a lot and I really kind of gave me the basic foundation mm-hmm. uh, and starting to think about how to how, how to look at business in the right way and what I really mm-hmm. want to do and mm-hmm. how do I stack up against the competition. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So when it comes to college, right, um, I hear a lot of people say, um, because, you know, you deal with money, mm-hmm. um, they don't want to go to certain schools or go to schools, period, because of loans. Mm-hmm. Or have. How do you feel about people taking out, having loans, 60000 80000 do you have a rule? My rule with loans are don't take, don't take uh, no more. Don't take a amount of money out that your job won't pay. So, say for instance, if you it, to to be a um, a doctor mm-hmm. or what have you, right? Yep. A lot of times, what are their loans usually about one hundred fifty thousand? Maybe give or take. Probably, probably about that. Yeah, like that. So maybe between sixty to one hundred, two hundred. Yeah. So that's that job is going to pay mm-hmm. between. A hundred, two hundred thousand, you know, twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So that's the rule. Like, don't take out a hundred thousand dollar loan to get a job that's going to pay you forty thousand dollars a year. But what if you don't know what you want to do? What you want to do? I, I, okay. I think that's another thing too, right? Everybody yeah. has a natural gift. Yeah. So you have this natural gift, mm-hmm. and me, if knowing what I know now, mm-hmm. I want to went to college at all, right? Because you look at the billionaires, they never went to college. So I just, mm-hmm. and I would develop a competitive advantage. I was just specialized. And mm-hmm. whatever I love doing, and mm-hmm. focus on that. And with mm-hmm. the digital age, every you can learn anything with YouTube, Google, YouTube, YouTube. Everything is there. Someone's gonna give you an explanation, and then once you get into that business, you go mm-hmm. to the trade shows, you go to conferences, you can learn those things. But mm-hmm. if you don't have that, and to do that though, you have to have this obsessive drive. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that obsessive mm-hmm. drive, it's over. do not do that. No, it's not mm-hmm. over. <laughs> it's not, that, like no, it's not, not over. over yeah, but yeah, yeah. don't take that route. That's mm-hmm. not the route for you. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, and I think the loans it actually makes sense because you're financing your future right. and you don't have another way to finance your future it's like okay well mm-hmm. you know am i going to eat or not eat i mm-hmm. can eat today but how i'm going to eat in the future and that's the difference mm-hmm. between eating so now because mm-hmm. most people that's hiring they're mm-hmm. going to as we look at it pose to someone with a college degree or not a college yeah, a degree they're going to want to hire it. yeah it's a, it's a basic mm-hmm. requirement so you're going to look at that so i think that in that sense people should consider the options that they have mm-hmm. and then while they're in university say this is just where we at in, 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 mm. in this generation right now within the United States and mm. try to not take on more debt from that, work a job, and do what you love. Since this mm. is already the situation, mm. do what you love mm. and just use that, those student loans to build your credit. Mm. And this is a big bubble. I think I don't know what's going to happen. I'm looking at this from an investment standpoint. So mm. this is a lot, some, some, some tips for y'all. This is real, real tips with the student loan bubble. So it's over a trillion plus dollars, the student loan bubble. It's second to the mortgage crisis. It's going to be even probably more than that. But as you and most people already know, you can't file for bankruptcy. That's why the co-signers right. are there. So there's no bankruptcy how it, how it is and mortgages and cars and right. different things like that. But it's just the government bankrupt the future. So okay. you bankrupt your entire nation, mm-hmm. meaning the, the students and the next generation. And so they're mm-hmm. bankrupt that nation. So it, it more than likely, in my opinion, I think there's going to be a bailout. Um, and if you look at Sally Mae, you look at Navient, they're publicly traded companies on the stock market. Oh, so yeah. you can look you can look at those companies and see if they're doing well. So you can say, okay, I'm already paying these guys, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And all these other people are paying them. I just like did an interview. They was calling me mm-hmm. even about some stuff, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, how are things going with the other people? I'm just being real inquisitive, asking them questions, uh, mm-hmm. interviewing them as they're interviewing me. And you can look at and see their numbers and what they're doing. So even if you wanted to invest in them, you say I'm already paying them. I know what's happening mm-hmm. going on. You can also benefit from that as well if you mm-hmm. know what you're doing. So I'm looking at these things even as investments mm-hmm. uh, for myself. 
Mm. Mm, that's real. It's this meme that I, I see a lot these days that you, it's easier. It's you can go to a bank and get a loan like that for mm -hmm. school, but for a business, it's like yeah. you ain't gonna get it. Like, how do you feel about that? You know, that that's the access to capital. Now we touching on mm -hmm. the underbelly. Mm -hmm. Of really America, that's power, that's control, mm -hmm. uh, and the access Facts. to capital has always been here in, in the United States is difficult as well as uh, outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. But what happened is even to to to, to get that loan, mm -hmm. most people don't know how banks think. Number one, I was so just even, about to say it's a yeah, mental they, thing. They don't it's know how banks thing. think, and yeah. they don't know how it's not even banks, even lenders. Think. So uh -huh. you don't know the criteria. To get you approved. Mm -hmm. So when you come, you say, oh, people don't like me. They don't want to do it. Well, you do you got two years financials? Do right. you have this? Do you have that? Do you have good credit? In order mm -hmm. to get those things in place, which most people mm -hmm. know, you have to have certain things, other support systems and mechanism even to, to have those things in place. And even when you have mm -hmm. even that criteria, for some reason at all, yes. they still may not approve you. And Based on it, the, the banker can say, I just don't like this guy. And it, this has happened. Damn, I was so wishing that was going to happen. that's why we actually have, you know, we wow. have a small, we have a strategic partner. They actually fund. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to get, I'm into getting into the direct lending business right now myself so I can make direct loans to these different businesses, Thank the, you. different entrepreneurs. Uh, and it, you'd be surprised. It's not just people of color. It's even more mm -hmm. pe uh, people, non of color with great, I mean, talking 800 credit score, business as well as personal. Can't get a loan. Boom. And I don't, they're, they're, I don't like you because I don't like you. I don't well, like not you. not even I don't like you. I don't understand the business. I don't understand what happened with your business or just within the cycle. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not even more that I don't like you. There's other variables that take place within the cycle. And you have to have multiple options in order to get funding. So it's really a creative solution and how bankers think they allegedly are conservative. They give you an umbrella when it's sunny, but when it rains, they take it back. And that's that's what's okay. wrong with the system. Yeah, but that that's and that's also an opportunity. So I see problems as opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if you see, you know, if you look at um, I think like 60 percent, even small to medium businesses, small to medium businesses considered between a million and a billion. They need access to capital. 60 percent of them cannot get funded. Mm hmm. Cannot get funded. So now, if you're a businessman, you want to start a bank, or even mm -hmm. I was telling even entrepreneurs, African Americans, even if they just unify, I was telling some of the ball players, mm -hmm. if you guys just unify, you mm -hmm. got a million, you got a million, you get ten of you guys, or let's say you get ten of y'all, even to put up ten million each, that's a mm -hmm. hundred million. You can make these loans to these businesses yourself, Sounds get ten, so fifteen, great, twenty, thirty percent. You know our people. Yeah, we're not a unified. That's not what we do. You know. Oh, they just. I mean, they unify into the sports thing. So it's just like. That's an opportunity. Yes, right. there's going to be challenges. There are going to be there are different things. Mm -hmm. You might not get get a few people. You only might be able to get two people. Mm -hmm. All you need is one person that got a large bank account that go ahead and give you the access. You know what you're doing. You do mm -hmm. a partnership. And you have to stay persistent. Or you can do smaller loans. A, a, a just entrepreneur came to me this morning in Philadelphia. We do some business together. She has a great credit medics business. And she now, she's doing direct loans. We're starting $500,000 worth her own money. Okay. And it's like 50, 100,000 total that she got. And she's making these loan changes are given to these entrepreneurs and so she came to me even more for advice and you know we used to be like family and I say that because uh, she did a business decision that I didn't really like and I used to give her free information and free game but I just told her I said listen man it's all love now we're gonna just treat it like business it ain't nothing personal I get mm -hmm. what I get where you at in your business cycle it's not personal but now I can't give you the free game no more. So just pay me. These are the prices. She said, cool, I respect it. I just want to hire you as, you know, more like a consultant to me. Mm -hmm. I said, all right. And um, that's that. I said, I, you know, the best thing is, you know, you should just give me equity because I know the business and you don't really understand mm -hmm. the business. So when you have to come back to me six mm -hmm. months, a year later, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot different. And mm -hmm. the price is going to raise. And you're going to say, wow, I done paid him all this money. I could have just brought him in. I could have just brought him in and got it essentially... For the That's kind of like what she's talking about, <laughs> but yeah. like, you know our people, you know. Um, wow, that's that's deep. So you 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 dropped into sports marketing a bit. Mm -hmm. Let's let's get into your this sports marketing part of yep. your resume. Okay. Uh, but, but where you want to start at? Do -doom, do -doom. All right. So I know you play basketball. Mm -hmm. So you got a love for sports. Yep. Ish. Um, what made you get into sports marketing? That, that's a that's a very good field. What uh, inspired to you to get into that? <laughs> I, I, I didn't really want to get into it. People, okay. <clears throat> my cousin asked me uh, that we grew up with. He asked me before. Mm -hmm. 
uh, help some of the players get into it. He loves sports as well. And then some of my other close friends, since you always play sport, I, I saw most athletes, mm. after they play sports, they get into some type of professional sports thing, a- athletic director, coaching, mm-hmm. an- analyst, because they've never, number one, they love the, the sport, but two, they've never developed another skill set outside mm. of the sport, which is troubling. Mm. And I never wanted to be that guy. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, I, I don't want to be that. Oh, this guy, he does sports. He does that. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happened is so many players and people would call me to help these players. And I know a lot of them personally. And I would be doing this stuff for them for free, almost like their business manager, putting them in touch with people, helping them get capital, mm-hmm. helping them get endorsement deals, looking at their contracts. And... Uh, I just reached a point, the same thing I said, you know, I can't keep doing this stuff for free. It's taking up too much of my time. I'm their therapist. I'm their financial mm-hmm. advisor. I'm their insurance guy. I'm this. Right. And I'm not even being paid for this. And then I started to look at it from a business standpoint. I saw, number one, I can help the players. I can empower them, empower their families. And people actually will say they, they need someone such as you. And the players will feel the same way. And the families, they, they felt that way. And then a lot of people, they said just because other cultures and stuff, they kind of run the, the business side. Most of the athletes, they don't really understand the business nor do their parent their parents and them they don't understand the business either mm. so i looked at it as a business standpoint i said okay i can not only i can empower the people and i can also make money i think in this digital age the athletes and celebrities they don't realize they will always be a brand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. and this digital age give them opportunities like never before because mm-hmm. the brands have a hard time. Most of the brands are being disintermediated with technology. Mm-hmm. Their businesses are being disintermediated with technology. So they need a way to get to a consumer. Because mm-hmm. the way they would get into the consumers with television and advertising. It doesn't always it, work. It, it doesn't always work, especially in a digital age. So the digital marketing, there's really mm-hmm. no master of the digital digital marketing game with Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, guerrilla mm-hmm. marketing. There's no master. There's no mm-hmm. one company. Like, wow, these guys are the best. So mm-hmm. anybody can put someone on YouTube in there mm-hmm. and become an influencer. Mm-hmm. So now the brands have to compete with the globe. And right. so they, the, the athletes and the celebrities have this unique, um, they, they have that influence with the people. Mm-hmm. So the brands don't understand most of the athletes and the celebrities and most of the athletes and the celebrities don't understand the brands okay. and the different okay. benefits to each okay. and most of the 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 from the athlete side mm-hmm. what what happens is with them i tell them it's, it's about four or five different businesses all within the business okay. so you got to create a brand develop a brand manage a brand you have to create content mm-hmm. you have to have social media social media management social media marketing and then you got digital management yes. and digital marketing those are four or five different businesses they don't have a team to do that the agent that they have normally is a lawyer he's trained in law mm-hmm. contracts mm-hmm. not necessarily in marketing so they get frustrated and understand why they're not make get any marketing and endorsement deals one it's because their representation and then two, it's because also they haven't, they didn't build a brand, yes. and then they don't got someone to bridge that divide. So we're working with the MLB right now, MLB PAA, the Players Union Association, on their uh, youth um, legends dinner. We doing some marketing for them and some other different athletes and celebrities as well. But um, on, from the brand side, we helping them understand as well and building their brands and making sure their brands eat, mm-hmm. are more efficient. The messaging and importance, I didn't even touch on data analytics mm-hmm. as well as streaming. Those things are huge mm-hmm. and it's big uh, and getting that information and how people consume mm-hmm. because the way people consume now, it's different. So consumer mm-hmm. behavior, their habits, mm-hmm. it's just totally different from the past. So that's why I kind of got into it. Mm-hmm. And I would always say, I want to give two examples. People, The people don't realize this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would always tell some of these athletes, you got a brand, you got a market, you got to do these different things and study in history. When I saw Muhammad Ali say years and years ago, Muhammad Ali was the best fighter mm-hmm. in the world. He had he, he didn't lose a fight, mm-hmm. but he couldn't get a title fight. And he mm-hmm. was like, well, I can't get a title fight. So he went and go watch this white wrestler named Gorgeous George. Mm-hmm. So Gorgeous George uh, was this white, big, fat wrestler, <laughs> perm hair. I'm too yeah, pretty. I'm too yeah. handsome. I can't possibly beat. And Ali went to go watch him at a fight. His fight was sold out. Right after that, Ali stole his thing. He said, mm-hmm. I'm too pretty. I'm too mm-hmm. handsome. I can't possibly brand. beat. He became yeah. a brand. No, but what he realized, because he, okay. he, didn't, he didn't realize what he said. What I realized is that nobody knew me. Promoters need to sell tickets. Okay, okay. And so okay. now when he said the too pretty, too possible, you know, you can't okay. possibly beat, that wasn't Ali. But he had to promote so that people mm-hmm. raised awareness to who he was. And that right after that, he got a title fight. And that's when he kept it going. Okay. But when people would meet Ali, 
they said he, he's a total different person. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Coca Cola, you look at McDonald's, you look at Microsoft, you look at all those companies, they will spend between 20 and 30% on marketing and advertising a year. Mm. And you look at McDonald's, my grandma, your grandma, mm. I can't even cook. I can make a better hamburger than them, True. but True. we can't do better marketing. Mm. Right, so they have a piece of the consumer's mind, and that's mm. the biggest and, thing. And they have a legacy. I mean, they've yeah. been around for so long. But but look at but that 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 that's there. But even marketing now in this digital age, mm. that matters, but not as much. Mm -hmm. So you take Rihanna, you take Kylie Jenner. Let's say they're not billionaires or they billionaires, whatever. Mm. Beg to differ. Mm -hmm. But both of their companies at least made about a quarter to half a billion. Mm -hmm. And you take Estee Lauder, you take Chanel, you take these other companies mm -hmm. over hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. What's taking them to do over hundreds of years? These people have done in two to three years, You're right. all within a digital age. Right. But that's what the digital age. You can disintermediate a business like that mm -hmm. where you could never do that before. Mm -hmm. And that's why I try to educate the athlete celebrities on the power of mm -hmm. their brand and also letting them know. Focus on where you're going to be a superstar. Like, stop mm -hmm. trying to go after the big deal. You, you, you mm -hmm. think you got 100, 200,000 followers. Man, focus locally and regional. That's where you're a star at. That's where right. you're going to focus on you at. And Grass getting roots, them to yeah. understand that. And uh, you can be a superstar locally and make more money. Like, Shaq mm -hmm. is making more money than ever. Right. How, how do you, what do you mean? You Shaq is making more money. He, he making more money with endorsement deals okay. than he ever made on the court. That's what that's what I'm getting with a lot, like even with LeBron James yeah. before he even started playing, like mm -hmm. right before the, the the season started, he yeah. was he was getting paid more from endorsements yep. than what the league was paying, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, value. <laughs> it's it's on, all good. It's, it's all good. Yeah. It's on vibrate. Oh, it's on vibrate. Oh, that's, yeah. that's oh, the video is playing. Oh, the yeah. video is playing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just it's live. Oh, okay. Is that coming from there? Yeah. It's coming from there. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Man, man, man. They, they trying to mess up the airways <laughs> and all that. You know? We ain't going to say what kind of phone that is, you know, because we ain't getting no checks from I them. Roger that. Them. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. um, but yeah, man, LeBron was getting all that money as a um from the endorsements mm -hmm. before he even. And I'm hearing a lot of stories like that, Shannon, about how, like, a lot of these dudes, they're not even touching the NBA yeah, checks. Yeah, no, Shaq, he didn't touch he didn't his touch NBA it. checks. He didn't even touch a lot of that stuff before. Shaq, he, I don't think he even spent a this, check from his rookie year. There's so much money in media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the money is. The money is yeah. in marketing. Monetizing that, I mean, and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's that's but, how these. But you got to know what you're doing. So yeah. first, y'all definitely got to call me. Don't don't right. try to skip steps. <laughs> yeah, there's levels to this. Right. Cause, cause, cause you should have an app, man. You should have an app. Roger that, man. You don't get you your should, tech guy. You what, what, what kind of app should I have? You should have an app. With, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Right. Wanna, yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's yeah, too yeah, much sauce. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm with you, bro. This, 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 I'm with this, you. This is what a consumer is right now. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got a question for you, man. Um, okay, if somebody wants to invest their money, yeah. okay, what what is the best thing you think they should invest their money in? It depends who they are. And All right, much, I'm, yeah. I'm, let me ask the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> it's someone who does not have a lot of money. Facts. And mm -hmm. that's that's the key because yeah. we all have expenses. Yeah. You no, know, we got rent. We have our Necessities might have children, mm -hmm. but we all have extra money some way somehow because we buying clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, we're buying Yeezys. Starbucks and McDonald's. Three hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. every now and again. Yeah. It may not yeah. be every month, but yeah. maybe every three months or every six months, you have a, you find yourself situation where you have a little bit of extra money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take the average so person. The average, the average person, job. if you take, if you even do that with compound interest, take the average person if they invest two hundred fifty dollars over the course of each month over the course of thirty years, compounded at eight. But it's about 9%, and that's just investing into an index fund. Put your money into an index. At 9% compound over that 30 years, you'll make about a half a million dollars. But they would have to invest 250 a month. Yeah, a month. So even if you broke that down, let's say even if you did $100 okay. right, mm -hmm. a month, which most people are doing, mm -hmm. you have your Spotify, you have this Apple stuff, you, they're buying cancel the easy. you can stuff. cancel out mm -hmm. some of the stuff. You, you, Uber you know, Eats. Yeah, when, when you Uber Eats, when you're going, <laughs> and we ain't even talking about when you're going to the club and yeah. you're fronting. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, well. We ain't even get there yet. Oh, I, I got to yeah. touch you on that. So all that money, the liquor, the hair, the, 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 the DR, you know, you're getting your body done or Ooh. guys going doing other stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that. 
no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying that. See, I do. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We allocate the funds. Right. That's all but I'm back saying. To it, back, back to it. Back to it from investment yes. side. So now you can take those different things. Even if you mm. took a hundred dollars, you know, might come back, come out to you know probably a quarter of a million. Okay, and everybody, yeah. And that's just you can take real simple, a hundred dollars, mm. and you can invest right into an index fund, S and P five hundred, mm. right there. Start a brokerage account. Ask them, well, what is the S and P five hundred? Google it. Mm. Put your money there and just let it sit. Mm. And that's something that everybody can do. do. And, if you, and, if, and, and if you don't, you know, that's something that I would definitely recommend. And then number one thing, always invest into yourself. If you don't want to do that into an index fund, yeah. put more time, energy into yourself. And then after that, mm. put it into the best and brightest people that you know, because human capital is the greatest form of capital. Okay. So right. you see other people that's making great investments or doing great things. You're like, listen, I may not be them, but I can support them. I can be part of what they're doing. Right. And we all see that. And you see the growth. It's like if you see somebody growing, they've been growing the last five, ten years. They really, like, they grind and they hustle and they doing mm. their thing. People too busy hating, but, though. Yeah, but it's like, but 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 that's that's, that's the thing, y'all. You, you're asking me what can they do? <laughs> I'm telling you the things that they can do. So if you yeah. get outside of your own way, you yeah. see the people that's natural superstars, and so you can make that investment in yourself. You can go ahead and invest in the index, and you can also invest into others. Mm-hmm. And those are really the three basic things, and the information and power and the education that you have. Nobody can ever take that away. So that investment, True. even in yourself, mm-hmm. it's going to always pay dividends. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now, okay, that, that's long-term investment because you yeah. just said 30 years, right? Yeah. People hit 30 years and they get scared. They just, they think, uh-huh. oh, hold up, I'm going to be retired. No, I, I want to spend yeah, some of my money now. It's compound interest. All right, so, yeah. you know, we're, we're reaching out to the viewers. Yeah. So now we're talking, okay, short-term investment. Mm-hmm. Was that five to ten years? Five, Give it somebody's got to put their kids through school. I know me and you are both in that boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, so, five to ten right, years so, still long-term so short, investment. So short-term investment. What is a good idea? One and number two, like, what if people want to see that money back? Okay, not just see it back, but they want to start their own business. They mm-hmm. want to, you know, and Pay one for of the college. Yeah, yeah. One of, and one of the things I was talking to my Get daughter body about. Done. Yeah, one of the things uh-huh. I, I was talking to my daughter about was like maybe like you know people should really come together and partner with their neighbor or or, or family members yeah. and, and put up you know a couple you few know, thousand other dollars. Other communities do it. Yeah. yeah. Other communities do it all the time. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think that's what might be missing. <laughs> it, that you know? is what's missing. No, that that's that's I think I think that's a part of it because people there are still people of other of color that put their money together and work that some people don't know about. They don't know what's going on Not behind the, the scenes. Not the same rate. No, but 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 mostly if you look at any other culture, they've never been through what we've been through. So you have that's to take true. that. Uh, there all those different things in consideration and still are going through the things that we go through. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, with all those things, within, there's still no excuse, but it's a valid reason mm-hmm. uh, for, for these things. And I think, so number one, uh, a, as what you said, mm-hmm. you can develop some type with this digital age. We just were speaking about it, even her product. You can have your own product or service, have your own uh, small business, create a website, hundred between 100 and $500, and you can have your product or service right there digitally. So you might not go be a billionaire or do anything like that, but mm-hmm. it's a product or service. you got your own little following on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, your website, and you can make a good, consistent living. That's mm-hmm. one thing. You can also do that partner with other local businesses, right? You can also right. invest into other different businesses. You might see different flip opportunities. I, I was talking to the Let's kids go. Go. Uh-huh. Uh, in Eagle Eagle Academy. Mm-hmm. I got a war with the Made Man. Shout out to Made Man Foundation. Uh, mm-hmm. the, I mean, amazing organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, but black women, they do, do great work. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to the kids and they were just asking some of the things. I said, number one, what you can do, um, you can you, you can just take all the inferior products at the corner store, right? We, we know in New York these products mm-hmm. are inferior. All they going, you can go to Costco's, BJ's, etc., Buy those products bulk. at in bulk. Sell them to the corner stores, or sell them back even to the kids. All the kids wear uniforms, so you can buy the pants, you can buy the clothes, buy it from a supplier, sell it back. He's right, he's I right. said, and these he's are right. all simple things right here. It, right. It, it doesn't take a lot of money. You You'd can be surprised M&M how much money right here. You I, I was like, make. and that, that you'll right. make right he's there. Right. I was like, a guy even in Easy he, even in there, water ices. They sell water ices right there. I mean, it's consistent, it's predictable, and you can make a great living. These for all uh, small businesses, entrepreneurs, things that you want to do. You want to look at uh, another. Thing with African Americans, JFK, as well as the Guardia. Hold on, let me stop. I feel like you know, feel like Jay when they be on the uh, just keep going. Like you know, might have, to, might have to get Lamont to drop a bomb to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, 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 let's get some bombs or some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, we and, here. So, and, and and so even you take JFK and LaGuardia, right? Mm-hmm. Airport. That's thirty billion. It's over allocated over the next 10, 20, 20 years. Mm-hmm. 
And now six billion is supposed to go to minorities allegedly. But even at the products and services that's going to be there, all within Southeast Queens, food, uh, electric uh, supplies, all those different things. Small businesses are going to flourish. Mm -hmm. Consultant, right now, I was just thinking I did a panel panel uh, panel at Fordham about a week or two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, are they, they all these people, they rushing. I'm like, y'all coming to learn about money and everything. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, I got to go to this thing over here. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, all right, what is that? Yeah. It's mental health. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, all right now, but that's cool. Definitely get your mind right before you come talk to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to have mm -hmm. your mind right first because that's the most important thing. Because even you, you know, you see if you got, if your mind ain't right, you got a lot of money, you're still going to lose the money. Mm -hmm. And then, right. but there's still a lot of people within the financial piece. So yeah. I will start a mental health clinic. There's a lot of different crises uh, right here. Mm -hmm. So you can consult people, you can do these things, you can help people and empower them and then mm -hmm. uh, do that all as well. Another thing is within mm -hmm. infrastructure, our infrastructure, we have to spend over a trillion plus guarantee, roads, bridges, tolls, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's in a crisis so you can look mm -hmm. at those different opportunities um, be there um, and you can be a, a coach and or a mentor mm -hmm. in some way and that's needed so you can find our community have many problems figure out one of those problems mm -hmm. solve that problem mm -hmm. uh, and make a good living for yourself and empower others so those, mm -hmm. those are probably about 10 even probably you know, wow. some just some good strategies, a mm. lot of things that people can do to, wow. to make some money. And uh, if you're really ambitious, you want to do something, can, you know, call me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And what's your number? Are you, did you give your number out? Yes. Oh, you I did? don't even know about it. Yeah, I did. I, I, I'll, did? Do, I'll do it again, you know, because we love the people. We love empowering y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's real. I, I, when I was growing up, I wish... Mm -hmm. I saw somebody such as myself. That's mm -hmm. why I do this, truly, to real give back and give real information. This, the most people that's in my seat that's know, that know this information wouldn't even gave these nuggets away. Mm -hmm. um, or, you could just, or you could just be a finder, go around and find mm -hmm. things that other people need. Mm -hmm. the, one of the Saudi billionaires he used to do that for the kings and stuff, and that's how he really made his mark, just mm -hmm. by being a finder. Mm -hmm. uh, and capitalizing on arbitrage and information. Mm -hmm. And so my number, if y'all want to reach out to me, 646-829-8723, um, that's my direct cell. I mm -hmm. do pick up, but please make sure it's professional. Right. Make sure it's respectful. Make sure you have a message. Make sure you mm -hmm. want to do something serious and you are serious. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you just do, want to do some basic things about a business plan and stuff, do your homework mm -hmm. first. Come, come up with a competitive advantage for a product or service mm -hmm. and then come talk to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not being bougie. I'm not being, you know, not big homie you or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm efficient. My time is limited and mm -hmm. I do want to help. That's why I'm coming out here because mm -hmm. I didn't have the opportunity to talk to everybody mm -hmm. all at once. I would never get anything done and be able to service our clients. Mm -hmm. And then I know we are digital. So mm -hmm. definitely find me on Twitter, Instagram, mm -hmm. Uh, and LinkedIn at Terrell J. Brown. I put out content. I just got the social media about a month or so ago. Okay, I'm good, getting my good. Facebook after tonight as well as a YouTube that. channel. Get I that. saw them. I said, man, they went live. This brother, that's a sign telling me, you know, mm -hmm. good Lord, hey, you got to yeah. get this. This is the next step. And so I'm doing that. And we mm -hmm. doing this uh, live for to empower the people. Y'all getting it right there. We cooking it up like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Benny Han is right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. There's no misconception. And, and, and we have our community leaders mm -hmm. uh, or alleged... Uh, as well as politicians, family shout out to members. James C, uh, C. B. Oh yeah, Gray, shout out, yeah. shout out to uh, James C. B. Gray mm -hmm. uh, for making all this happen and bridging mm -hmm. the connect. He's a he's a great brother. Yeah. Um. Sorry he couldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And but we have so many people lying to us twenty four seven, mm -hmm. and I've just always my whole life just wanted to tell the truth and always been telling the truth. So I mm -hmm. think that's just important mm -hmm. where we at. And I know y'all mm -hmm. been empowering the people. So continue mm -hmm. to keep doing what y'all doing. And mm -hmm. it's not easy because mm -hmm. we get very little support. So I want to say this. While I'm on air. That, that's a bomb right there. That's a big bomb boom, right boom, there. Boom, 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 yeah, boom. yeah. <laughs> so yo, let me check. Yo, so we got how much time? We got about 12 minutes left. Okay. So check it out, man. Um, through your time working as an investor and working mm -hmm. with money, do you have like a, a, a story on someone who has um, blew their money, invested in the wrong thing? Uh, many different many stories. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you a quick one. Most people, they would come to me yes. even after this is. Okay. Uh, I don't know why this. I guess people they come to me after when they yeah, in need. Yeah. You know how that go. But mm -hmm. so I they would they would come and say, "Hey, listen, what should I do? Mm -hmm. uh, I have X, Y, and Z amount of money, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go do this." Mm -hmm. And so one person they actually play, play in the NFL. He was doing some things, and mm -hmm. I told him, "Listen, you have this money, mm -hmm. even whether you invest with me or not. Go get a professional on your team that know." 
what they're doing. They didn't listen to me. They've blown millions. Mm-hmm. And most of these people, they don't even have the courage to come back to you and tell you as a man and say, listen, I messed up. Mm-hmm. So you can still benefit because you have relationships and do other things. And that's that's on a higher level. And this this is not just that person. I'm talking even other business people. I know a kid. Well, he's not a kid, but he's in, he inherited like 30, 40 million from his family. This is a white guy, by the way. Uh, former client, a uh, real estate client. And, well, his mom was a former client of mine. Mm-hmm. And he blew twenty million in the stock market. He didn't know he Jesus. owned like four hundred stocks, and they tried to come get me in to salvage the relationship. I said, first of all, I'm not going to touch this. Number one, he's insane. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's on margin. He have no clue mm. what he's doing, and he's not listening. And y'all want me to come in here and salvage this? So once things go bad, even or get worse, now I right? take the mm. fall. Like Trying I was, yeah, like I was, mm. like I was part of this. I had mm. no parts of this. I don't want to be a part of this, mm. and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Mm. And so, these, I mean, th- there are just many different situations like mm-hmm. that. And I just don't, even if they would have gave me a million, mm-hmm. it, what I would have did with it. But I said, you know what? If, they, if, if, if you wanting to do whatever you're doing mm-hmm. is more than you succeeding mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. getting help, so be it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So, you, listen, you're a good brother, man. Uh, um, what, what, what keeps you going? What drives you, man? What kind of music you listen to? I don't even listen to music, bro. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just trying to transition. It, but just just growing up, I think most people never really believed in whether sports on the other side. I had to really become good. And now as I become good and doing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. I just always had this burning desire to mm-hmm. be somebody. And I think even the business to really be successful. And I just want to be the best in the world mm-hmm. at what I do. Um, not for no other, not even more for the money, just to say, you know, I'm the best. And mm-hmm. I know that wherever I go in the world, I'm the best at what I do. Mm-hmm. And just having that passion and having that drive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I do want to make a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. So but not just for the sake of making money, but for that independence, the freedom, the things that right. allow you to do, allow you to empower people, allow you to live the lifestyle that you want, mm-hmm. uh, allow you to help your family, mm-hmm. allow you to help your friends, allow you to do more for others. And so mm-hmm. it's a, it, there's many different variables. Mm-hmm. And then another thing, uh, part of it is just I don't think no one has ever seen someone in this business do it at the major level uh, to that extent, especially in this bit. It just, it just hasn't been done. We're seeing Robert Smith. He has a special niche within private equity and doing those things. And so people see other tech people, but they, they haven't seen a black hedge fund manager that mm. people know globally. No like, no wow. Way. Like, And I was like, wow, you know, you can be the first person to mm. do that mm-hmm. and still uh, make money, do the right thing and, mm. and, and, and that way. So there, it's just been this burning desire really mm. to prove myself uh, to the world, mm-hmm. and so I think just 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 my whole life, I just had this burning desire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's important yeah. that you that you said that too. That you don't listen to music, and, and I mean to each his own. Yeah, you know, well, I just didn't, haven't had the time. So and, I, and, I, I, and I, I use that too now. I think just to push myself. I think sometimes mm-hmm. when you when you have music, just mentally, I want to be mentally tougher because there's going to be sometimes you're going to be in situations where there's no music. There's mm-hmm. nothing there, right? And you have to really say, well, how just can you. I get just you. just you? Just you yourself. You got to really get comfortable with yourself. So I do it not as to not listen to music, to not do these things. But it's not you don't myself. like it. It's not you don't like it. Yeah, not like that it. I don't like it. It's just, just to push myself <laughs> mentally. Or yeah. sometimes I might just listen to an instrumental mm-hmm. to just tune out, get my thoughts clear and those different things. And every everybody's different. Different mm-hmm. things work for different people. These right. are things that work for me. Right. That's all I get. These are things that work for me, but I tell people, mm-hmm. do what works for, for you. you. Yeah. And, and this helps me just, I think, have a, that competitive advantage because mm-hmm. I'm clear. I wake up sober every morning mm-hmm. and that really allowed me to analyze companies, businesses, as well as people. Mm-hmm. What time do you get up in the morning? Uh, I've been getting up even earlier. Sometimes I get up four or five, sometimes six. And uh, so even like last night, man, I think I got on like 12 o'clock, one, I got mm-hmm. back up you know, six, seven, mm-hmm. and I try to read, think, even get some meditation, but I know health is important, so I've been sleeping a little bit uh, mm-hmm. now, and it's not a sprint, it is a marathon, no matter how hard you work today, if, mm-hmm. you know, the, the pyramids wasn't built overnight, That's right. no matter how many women you have sex with, it's going to still take nine months to have a baby, That's right. so <laughs> yeah, just just understand those things, and that's what I really had to learn, so I've been slowing that, making sure that my health is important, I'm mm-hmm. eating right. But um, so anywhere between four to probably six, just go on a given day. All right. So there's a lot of liter- there's literature out there that we need to be educated to, yep. to educate ourselves mm-hmm. on financial growth, et cetera. Yep. What, what do you think is the, the best 
to read. You know, you got Black Enterprise. I don't, I don't think the still richest around. man in Babylon is a good book. A great book, great book. Uh, all right. One book I read every day. Uh, I don't even know why tell that. It's all good, man. I know. You I can know. tell That's me after on. this. I, Come I, I, on, I, man. We give you a bomb after the, after the book. <laughs> no, I can't do that for a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, but, but if not a book, then like you know, the Wall Street no, Journal. No, uh, no, no that, that New York those, Times. All, like, all, you, all of those things are helpful. Mm-hmm. I would. Now you saying for basic finance? What for basic financial like it, literacy or just? <laughs> If people but, just want to know about money, they want to educate themselves, like they want to be able to think outside the box, you know, just, just to see what's going on out there in the money world, you know, because diff, peop, different people are doing different things with their money, mm-hmm. you yep. know, and, and it's like information changes situations. Study the billionaires know? list in depth. Okay. The billionaires list? In depth, you said? Study them oh, okay. in depth and study oh, in depth. each individual okay. on how they made their money, money. and you'll know about money. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's I mean, a good that's, that's a, no, that's that, good. no, that's that is, that is good. And I mean, and then you can, you could, uh, you can Google these people. Yeah, Google them. You can find out their business and yeah. look at their website, see them. Yeah. You might even DM them mm-hmm. if yeah. you got enough courage, mm-hmm. if you got a product or service, or you mm-hmm. might even be in the same circles as them already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's what, that, yeah, that's yeah. what I, I, yeah. I quit my job after I was looking at the billionaires mm-hmm. list. I looked at everybody around me. I said, man, mm-hmm. I don't want to be like this. Like, Check, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> like, and then literally, I put in that same day, I yeah. put in my resume. You design yourself. You design yourself. And that's just, that's just the thing and I still mm-hmm. study them to this day I do the mm-hmm. same thing I look at them see how they made mm-hmm. their money Whoa. what they're telling what's going on how can yeah. I have a competitive advantage where do I stack up against Facts. them uh-huh. right now you can see most of these people are already digital have some type of mm-hmm. social presence they're going to tell you things mm-hmm. and realize that most of them going to give you some of the game which is still more than enough no one's going to mm-hmm. tell you everything, everything yeah um mm-hmm. They, they're not going to be as generous as I am. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. even I can't give you all the sauce, you know, because mm-hmm. anything of value you can't give away for free for too long, you'll be out of business. Facts, facts. <clears throat> yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, so before we wrap, we've got a couple minutes left. Okay. Um, when we was in the car, we was talking about briefly about the 401k yeah, and all yep, that kind of yep. stuff. How can we educate our people, the nine to fivers, on mm-hmm. this? Oh, I can't wait to get my... But yeah, number that. one, just notice most of the pensions are underfunded and, you know, they're on the verge of bankruptcy. At least half, if not really, it's probably about 70, 80 uh, percent mm-hmm. of the pensions are underfunded. So even though you're thinking that you may have a retirement coming, you may not mm-hmm. based on the numbers right now. Wow. So definitely educate yourself. Know about what your 401k and most of those 401ks, they're already invested into the stock market. So you need to know, know mm-hmm. what mutual fund or bond fund that they or invested in that they invested in and also understand the fees understand the structure understand make sure this uh is within your preference and the things that you actually want um and if you don't you can, y'all i give i gave out my number four y'all can also call me mm-hmm. um and we can come sit down and i can help you uh with those mm-hmm. things but this is very very important if you know something mm-hmm. is like you know, it's like it's fire and a bridge is about to collapse. Like, mm-hmm. Don't go over there. So you need to understand these different things because mm-hmm. it's it's a tragedy that this is happening right under our nose. And mm-hmm. people in the community, they expect them that windfall and they've worked 30, 40, 50 years mm-hmm. and they've contributed within their 401k. Mm-hmm. And then to come find out there's nothing. And I spoke to a teacher even about two, three weeks ago. And she said the same amount of money that she put in. In there, she had the same thing. She didn't get mm-hmm. no rate of return on her money, and it, these are multiple people that's telling me they, they, these things. I said that's a tragedy. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. these people should be f- like more than fired, mm-hmm. let alone. But that's the educational piece. So mm-hmm. you have to empower yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to know what the, the fees that that you want. You have to Google it. I mean, anything is better than nothing. Mm. Yeah, so don't just sit there because I know if y'all will ask me, if I came in there and asked you to manage your money right there, you'll be asking me questions top to bottom. So Mm -hmm. go ask that same person those same Mm -hmm. questions about your own money right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah. Just 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 imagine uh-huh. that they are me. Shoot at me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, See the answer they give you. Yeah. Shannon, you got anything else you want to ask our brother before we wrap it up? I want to just touch on something you said, goal setting. Mm-hmm. How important mm-hmm. is goal setting for you? Very important. Goal setting is the difference between success and failure. Even if you don't reach those goals, so I set a goal. We have even weekly performance reviews, even at the job. We have follow up on everything. I have goals mm-hmm. that I still haven't hit. Mm-hmm. That I'm like, man, what? And then you realize you're not as great as you really need to be. 
So mm. you need to set the goals because the, the, the goals are your GPS to get to where you're trying to go. So yes, you're sir. at point A and you're trying to get to B, but you need those goals to mm-hmm. get you to point B. And the goals keep mm-hmm. you focused, keep you disciplined and all those different things. And so you have to have people will say, what is your why? Mm-hmm. And so why? Right? Why are you doing what you're doing? So when mm-hmm. I ask me, okay, well, I'm, I can go be a millionaire, be a lawyer, go do this. And I said, no, focus on what you love. The money's truly going to come. Mm-hmm. But really go do that. And mm-hmm. then, so set those goals, but stick it there. No, I don't know how I'm going to get into the business. You're going to get into the business. I'm going to help you, number one, but also focus and get and set those goals. So I have the, you have the short-term, medium, and long-term goals. Mm-hmm. And see what's working, what's not working. Write it down. Write okay. that process down. And most people, they don't do that. They just go out there, nah, bro, I got it. You know, things going to work out. No, it's not going to work out. You mm. need to write that stuff down and see what's working and what's not working. Be mm. diligent because this is your future. Right. Mm. And pay attention, yeah. you know. Wow. Yep. Have that laser focus, I guess. And mm. it gets difficult. You know, life mm. gets in the way. Mm. Tragedies happen. Yeah. You know, the bill collectors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, but that's no excuse. And that's what I, I, I one thing even part in setting goals, that's to be the first thing. Don't ever give yourself no excuse because this mm-hmm. country and the world will not give you an excuse. Your kids, your family, nobody's going to give you an excuse. Even if they give you a pat on the back, oh, this is great. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. No, no. Mm-hmm. That, 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 not doing th- that. No, that you definitely can't give yourself an excuse because when you want you do that, now you start slacking. Mm-hmm. It's like someone, oh, no, the customer, they don't know that this ain't really that. Mm-hmm. No, you can never skimp on quality. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they know or they don't know. That's just a reflection of who you are. So once you set those goals, because it's all about habits. Mm-hmm. Yes. And now you're building those habits. you got one body and one mind that you need for a lifetime, and it's going to be all reflected based on those habits. And that's what you need to go ahead and do. So, I, I mean, I have my goals. I have my to-do list. And to-do list, mm-hmm. the, that, that daily to-do list mm-hmm. helps you achieve those goals. Okay. Mm-hmm. And relax, man. Meditate. Pray. Meditate. You know, yeah, that's, you got to meditate. you got to get your key. mind right, your mind, body, Celebrate spirit. Your Celebrate. Yep. Yeah, meditate, celebrate. Pray. 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 Come up with a third one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, meditate, yeah. celebrate, mm-hmm. pray, financial, spiritual, mental, all, all those yeah. things. I'm yeah. writing that down. Are right part now, of it. Education and if you right don't, here, if man. you don't know that, uh-huh. it's not, it's not a problem that you don't know that. Now mm-hmm. you know it. Right. And share. Mm-hmm. Be inclusive. Don't just because this is a buzzword today. Really mm-hmm. share. Reach out. You have three people even here, uh, and stay connected. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. And if and if you don't see it built out there, you done reached out to too many people, build it yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You might have to start with a, a a young person, young boy, a young girl. Mm-hmm. Most people they don't you realize what the great Malik El Ha Shabazz, what he's done, even help with the Muslims and Elijah Muhammad. It may have been four hundred, let's say even but you know, with the organization that when Malcolm joined, let's say even it was four thousand, yeah. you know, to be generous because never that that's an amazing organization. Mm-hmm. But he started as a out as a bean pie guy a bean pie and he helped him with him and Elijah Muhammad and many others build that organization if somebody did that for a business they'd be a billionaire yeah, and yeah. but he was they was obsessive about whatever they were doing and they unified and so those same things you have to definitely unify you need a team mm-hmm. absolutely All right. All right. and that's that's what it is man this is definitely one of those episodes where you can just rewind, listen to, listen to, and and really educate yourself. A lot of little gems right. in this yeah, one, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, nah, he's a big gems. gems. He's yeah. a big gems. He's a big gems. That's all good. Big gems. So check it out, man. We're going to wrap it up. Like I said, everyone, y'all can go to YouTube, watch the whole episode over again. Um, it's going to be on Apple, Spotify. Um, definitely uh, donate to the situation. Cash app. The uh, information is on the um, on the screen. And that's how we doing, man. Episode 48 is a wrap. We will see y'all next week. And y'all have a blessed day. All right. Stay blessed. Peace. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, we're going to wrap. We're going to wrap it up with um, a song from uh, my brother, Mr. MK212 from Harlem, produced by T-Top Dollar, featuring Paper Over, Cole Ice, PT, and Gutter. Harlem. Harlem.
a big bag, my pimp swag. Plus my bitch bad, she had tits, I brought her ass. I, I hit it once, then I brought her back. You just a player, I call the players the quarterback. Four of rocks, a couple bottles of rose, four bad bitches and singles with me like four gay. Yes, 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 that nigga MK. I pay the play like baby ain't shit free. The beat blazer, to T, hit PT. No kids, that's no BM. On IG, I'm bitches MCM. Them see him, him see them, him be curving. It's all about promotion, that's no time we work it. But she could do a spit on the pole while she twerking. <laughs> But she could do a spit on the pole while she twerking. Hey yo, and my bitch bag is a big bag. Hey yo, and my bitch bag is a big bag. My pimp swag. And my bitch bag is a big bag. My pimp swag. Hey yo, straight shots. I need some ice for the henny. Straight shots. I need some ice for my henny. Straight shots. I need some ice for my henny.